All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. So now let's go on for our first uh, class discussion, which is the basic concepts. Um, um, basic concepts for assessing environmental impacts. So, um, so environmental impact assessment is actually a formal process for identifying likely effects of activities or projects on the environment. That's why it's called environmental impact assessment. We, um, it's like um, before you know doing your project, before doing anything with your project we will identify as to what are the possible impacts of the project to the environment. Not only to the environment per se, but also to human health and to human welfare. As we all know, um, you know, environment, yeah, we have the environment, but there are other um, organisms, there are other living things that is part of the environment or living in the environment. Like for us, um, people, we are living in the environment. So whatever it is that's going to happen to the environment, in one way or another, it will affect us. It will affect the human life. It will affect um, plants. And it will affect, at the same time, animal life. So um, at the same time, um, environmental impact assessment is a means and measures to mitigate and monitor these impacts. We all know that you know, in, in every kind of progress, in every kind of development, I know you are very aware, aware of this, uh, civil engineers are very aware of this, that in every progress and in every development, there is always an impact. There's always a positive and there is always a negative impact. Um, and, and, and to that, since there is always a quote-unquote negative impact, um, if we would like to have a zero negative impact, I don't think there is a possible development or prog progress that could happen. So to that, if there is always a negative impact, um, what we can do is we can measure it and we can, we can find ways to mitigate that impact, to lessen the impact to the environment, to human health, and to all kinds of living organisms. So um, and which, as we all know, if we are going to define environment, um, it's broadly interpreted as you know, physical, biological, and social aspect um, is considered as environment. Um, at the same time, in layman's term, when we say environment, for me, environment is actually everything that is outside your skin. Everything outside your skin, my table, my desk, my computer, my dogs, whatever, it's actually part of the environment. And, um, and you know, um, quoting to that, um, which means if we are going to do environmental impact assessment, it's, we, we will not going to be only considering um, the impact of the impact to human, the and the impact to the uh, human welfare, but of course the impact to the environment per se, or for the environment as a whole, on its physical, biological, and social aspects. In which um, EIA, the term impact, is used instead of effects of activities. Um, we are not using the effect like you know the cause and effect the effect of activities but the impact per se so what do we mean by um impact so the impact of an activity is a deviation or a change it's not an effect or a result but a change from a baseline situation that is caused by the activity so when we say baseline situation it's actually the existing so baseline is like the reference point it's like the different reference points in reference point in a specific time. So the baseline situation is the existing environmental situation or conditions um, in the absence of the activity. So that is why um, in every environmental impact statement report, there is always a baseline information or there is always a baseline 
baseline study. So, um, of course, to measure an impact, um, we must know what is the baseline situation. We must have a baseline or reference point. Because how can we compare what happened to a certain area after the project if we don't have any baseline? So that is how important our um, baseline information is. So the baseline situation is actually is the key concept in EIA, in which um, the baseline situation is basically... Um, the environmental components in a certain in an environment um, in which the components of interest are those that are likely to be affected by by your activity or upon which your activity depends for its success so for an example of this environmental components would be um, like water um, its quantity its quality its really 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 oh, sorry really reliability all right and accessibility another component is the soil uh which you know consider its erosion maybe its crop productivity its follow periods its salinity nutrient um nut and nutrient concentrations also we have the fauna uh, which focuses on populations in habitats we also have environmental health um like disease vectors and pathogens we also have flora um like composition and density of natural vegetation, productivity, and key species. And of course, we also have the special um, ecosystems in which it would compose um, the key species. So to that, um, the baseline situation uh, is actually not just a simply the snapshot of the current situation before your activity happened, but it's about describing the baseline situation um, requires describing both the normal variability and uh, environmental components and, of course, um, the current trends in these components. Just like um, the graph that I'm showing you, um, as we all know, um, for example, in the, in, the, in the well, in the water well that I'm showing you in the graph, as we all know, it's not every day it has the same level of water um, on that well. Of course, in a specific time, in a, in a variation of time, in a specific day, in a specific time of the day, there is a variation to that water table, as we all know. Um, um, and, and, and if we are going to graph that, definitely it, it can show us the trend over time. And, and both, again, are part of the groundwater baseline situation. It's not only what is the water table today and what is the water table tomorrow and what's the water table last at this specific time but it's actually um the variability and the trend over time of for example that specific water table um yeah again it's not only a snapshot but it would it should consider only it should consider the variability and the trend over time and at the same time we actually have um types of impacts under attributes so we have um um, in which AIA process is concerned with all types of impacts and may describe them in a number of ways. Um, in which uh, later on we will be discussing. Um, I'm not uh, in the coming in the coming discussion. I say um, there are direct and secondary impacts, but it actually depends on your EIS report and and how are you going to put a term in your impact. But basically, we have uh, direct and indirect impacts. Yep, we have a short-term and long-term impacts. We also have adverse impacts and beneficial impacts, and we also have cumulative impacts. At the same time, um, you can use um, the different terms, like you can use intensity, you can use direction, spatial extent, duration, frequency, reversibility, and probability. However, um, all impacts are not treated equally. Um, there are impacts um, in which later on in, your, in, in designing environmental management plan, there is always a uh, equivalent, um, how do you call this? There's an equivalent legion, I, I should say, in layman's term, um, like the intensity or um, I'd say, 
yeah, the intensity of the impact. That is why, you know, we, we put numbers like adversely affect, adverse impact, um, not so... Um, yeah, later on, I'll, I'll give you an example, definitely. But um, the most important part here is um, impacts are not treated equally. So in which, in, in your EIS report, um, we will put a legend um, to that specific impacts as to how likely or how often or occasionally would be the impact of the certain activity that we will be choosing. All right, so specifically, it is essential in EIA to focus on the most significant impacts in which if the impact is not that it would not um, directly or it is actually not significant, its impact is not significantly uh, significant, um, therefore, we will not consider that and we will not waste our effort and time in analyzing and discussing those impacts that are less important. In which, that is why um, during the EIA process, the screening part is very important. Um, because um, from that screening, we can already see and we can already put um, um, assumptions and we can already identify what are these impacts that we will be considering in in um in assessing the impact or in assessing the environmental impact of a certain activity so um what is an activity so activities or um yeah activity is actually a desired accomplishment or output for example road um seedling production river dimension to irrigate land um, creating dams um, creating buildings, creating a new university. Um, yeah, so those are um, desired accomplishment or output. And accomplishing an activity requires a set of actions. Uh, for example, activity, market access, market access or, or road rehabilitation. Of course, your action is before doing anything or before you know, calling all the construction workers and all the help, you can have, of course, you have to survey first as to where, for example, for the road. Excuse me, where are you going to lay down the road? I know you are very familiar with this because you know most of you are civil engineers. So yeah, um, you know we have to. Uh, you have to have the survey first, the grading, the culvert construction, the compaction. You know the type of soil if it's appropriate for making a road, and so on and so forth. In which a project or program may consist of many activities. And and to that, um, let's go now to the EIA process. Mm -hmm.